welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never role-played before journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Grand Wizard Bukake, your host. Reginald pulled off his first heist, escaping with the merchandise and his entire team intact, while Quinny set Kira Bloodfist up to take the fall for the Bone Crusher's failed mission. And Juniper found out the man she was searching for died, but his brother might be able to help. What will happen when she opens the mysterious blue orb he provided? Find out next on Dom Doms and Dragons. Ryan, as Reginald, as Quinny, um, you and your urchins have successfully pulled off your first heist. Um, and it feels pretty damn good. Uh, you are back at, um, I assume you'd go to the pigsty or would you go to, uh, Snuffles Funhouse? Pigsty. Cause we got, we got merch to hide now. No more Funhouse. Um, so, uh, you're back in the pigsty, uh, in Hatsfield. Um, it's, uh, I think probably we're going to kind of narratively cover, the rest of that night and then kind of into the next morning, I think just to, for, for ease of time. Um, so the heist has been successful. Um, Mickey is, uh, is absent. He's, he's gone to check in with his contacts, uh, by which he means skittering around as a rat and listening to people who don't think he can understand. And then coming back with information about the whereabouts of the crystal. Uh, but for tonight, you've successfully lifted, uh, the stabby stabby brain machine, and uh, you have a bit of a chance to celebrate. So my question to you, Ryan, is what do you think you're getting up to right now with the urchins? Or are you just kind of doing your own thing? No, I feel like he'd be combining his, like, general habits with, like, Quinny's team-building habits, or at least the team-building habits that he'd hope Quinny has had. I feel like Reginald is slowly shifting to trying to be an aspirational form of Quinny, where he's like, <laughs> can I be Quinny plus, you know, 10%? Yeah, Quinny uh, plus is the premium Quinny you have to subscribe to. Normal Quinny doesn't have all the features, but Quinny plus, oh boy. Yeah, he's subscribing now. So I think he would set them up to, like, celebrate and give them, like, watered down ale so they can't get themselves so fucked up they're useless the next day. And then, uh, you know, congratulate people on doing good. I think he'd promote Lyndon because he'd just be like, you're you're the sergeant now. Like, he'd just apply random military things because I think he thinks rank is very important. So Reginald would assume that that is true of every organization rather than being like, ah, they're all loosely aligned thieves. He's like, would so you, there's a thief general. Would you give, yeah, I was going to say, would you give them uh, like military ranks or would you give them weird thief ranks that you think sound like they might be ranks thieves mm -hmm. would have? Uh, I feel like he'd probably promote her to sergeant and then she'd look at him weird and he'd go um, uh, thief, master, sergeant, brown barrel. Thief, master, sergeant. Oh, and you can just see like a halo of happiness around her as uh, she, uh, she, she grins just ear to ear. She's not quite yeah, a master and... chief, but she's on her way. And I'm the Thief Master General. Now, Dice, you and I need to have a little conversation. Uh, and he'll just, like, walk him over to the corner like Quinny would and be like, So, you threw the caltrops directly above you and then they fell on your head. Uh, and then they didn't do anything. So this is a weird thing. But you actually want to throw caltrops out, not up. Just out in front of you. You want to make, like, a big thing. You know what you used to do with out, cards but that was bad? Up. Yes. Where all the cards would spray all over the ground in front of you? Yeah, it was bad. That's not where cards are supposed to go. No, but that is where caltrops are supposed to go. Interesting. Because I, I don't know if you know what caltrops are for, but they make people's feet hurt and they make horses' feet hurt, so they stop chasing you. Uh, Thief Master General, I don't mean to interrupt, um, but it would seem to me that if my job was to prevent anyone from following us and no one followed us, technically I succeeded. I agree this time but next time you might have to do even more which is why i'm promoting you <gasps> to thief master rear guard thief master rear guard brown barrel yep you're the you're the the last one in but you're the first no wait other way around you're the, you're, you're going in with the team in the order we tell you but you're going to be the last one out of the rest of the gnomes uh unless uh lyndon or i give you orders because we outrank you but Oh. You've got an important job, so, and that's so Linden. It. Linden's better than me. Not better than you. Different than you. Linden's there to lead the others, and you're here to keep everyone safe. So 
I'm the hero. You're one of them. You're I'm of them. the only hero. <laughs> um, and uh, he Just walks away, <laughs> loading, loading caltrops in, into his, his sleeve uh, and practicing throwing his arms out, not up. Great. Uh, Ryan, I'm going to give you one point of inspiration for having to navigate a weird, like, disappointed son adventure. Um, uh, you did a good enough job of making him feel important while also making sure he will die first. Yeah, and then I think he's just like, well, why couldn't my dad have done that? Is all he thinks in his head, having finished. That's all you need. You don't even have to be that nice. Excellent. Um, so having dealt with uh, your troops, as it were, they're, they're all celebrating drinking their watered-down ale. Spirits are high. Um, they're trying to come up with secret handshakes, um, and all of them have different opinions, and none of them are really letting anyone else talk. Um, so they're, like, happily distracted for your purposes. Um is there anything you would want to do just kind of as you? I will mention, now that you're back in Hatsfield, you're actually not too far away from uh, Reunities, where everyone knows your name. Um, so if you did want to go there, spend the night there, or um, any other thing with that, you could. <clears throat> that said, everyone knows your name. So if you're trying to keep a low profile, not the best. No, I think he'd go back because he hasn't talked to Dahlia, Daria, whatever Dealer. her name is. Uh, he only talked to her brother, which might mean yep. his info's bad. So, like, he, he needs to go talk to her. So he'd sneak out to go do that and tell him to watch watch the the, the merchandise. All you right, gotta so... protect that as though you were Quinny Brown Barrow. You got that, Brown Barrow gang? And then he holds up both hands like for a, that he would expect to go hoard in response. Um, and they all just, like, throw their hands up and yell, We're sneaky little boys, girls, and people! That's right. You watch that merch. I'm gonna go find out about my brain transporting magic. <laughs> oh, darn. Uh, and then he just puts on his invisibility ring and just poops out of there. Uh, amazing. Um, yeah, I just use poop as a verb. This is yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Honestly, in this show, like, <laughs> yep. Um, all right. Uh, so... Uh, Tyler as Quinny as Reginald. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you have uh, successfully impressed the hell out of your squad, but you also lost uh, the cranial um, fulcrum, uh, which is bad news in theory. <laughs> it's good news for you. Yep. Uh, bad news in theory. Um, all of you are making your way back to the um, uh, the tower. Uh, this time, you're not really bothering walking with the guards. Uh, this was very high profile. Uh, it was a slaughter at the docks. Um, the um, bone crushers wanted to burn the rest of the the supplies and sink the boat. Do you let them? Uh, no. I think the faster we get back, the the better. I should mm. probably role play that, but um. Uh, no, that, that's that's fine in broad strokes if you want. Um, I will have you roll a persuasion check uh, yeah. or an intimidation check, depending on how you want to role play it. And then, yeah, if you can just give me the, the few lines you yell at them, because, like, they're all excited. This is what they, they normally love doing. Uh, I don't know if it's intimidation or persuasion yet. Um, I think it's probably more persuasion. I don't think I'm threatening them, but, like, we're all kind of in trouble is the thing. But we'll say persuasion. So that's 8 plus persuasion so that's a total of 10 10 um okay so i think if that's your argument like we're in trouble we need to go back and get yelled at by declan yeah it's like time is of the essence we've made like a, a huge scene here um and i have to i have to report um okay yeah so um with that justification in a 10 i'll i'll let it ride largely because kira is like Oh, yeah, we should really get back and let you report about how well this all went. We should go. Um, so, with disappointed aws, everyone, like, snuffs their torches and kicks dirt. And, Torching's um, for winners, I say. <laughs> <laughs> and they all nod, and they're like, yes, that is a, a long-standing turn of phrase in the horde. Reginald is correct. One day we'll torch again. But today is not that day. <clears throat> um, so you all begin making your way back. Um, as, uh, as you're sort of winding through the streets, um, uh, Jun Pai kind of makes his way up and he's like, hey, uh, so that, we're, 
we were supposed to kind of keep it low and everything kind of went to shit. Um, yeah, the first thing I saw was Kira punched a guy in the chest. What did you see? Uh, I, I mean, honestly, I, I was pretty far away, but yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, I just saw chaos break out and Kira started killing the dock workers. And then, of course, you know, uh, we're, we're the bone crushers. We're not just going to kind of let them hit us back or anything like that. We're going to keep hitting them until they're in the ground. But I don't yeah. know why Kira started that. That's that's so strange. But hey, listen, look, if the two of us say that, I think she's going to get wise. Um, you, you should probably find one other witness uh, who can speak to that. Well, I don't know about getting wise. I think I think it's the truth. Uh, I'll go talk to Draken and make sure that you know he didn't see anything else. Sure. Um, so you make your way over to Draken. Uh, Draken lost his helmet somewhere in the fight. Uh, mm-hmm. So now he says the stupid Batman lines, <laughs> um, and uh, he says, "Oh, hey, uh, Reginald, uh, quite a quite a swirling melee back there, huh?" Yeah, felt kind of you know good to stretch out the killing muscles, you know. Yeah. You don't want to get a killing Charlie horse from not having stretched out your killing muscles. Definitely. Now, having said that, that was supposed to be a bit more of a subtle mission. See, mm. uh, what did you notice when things got really crazy? What happened back there? Um, well, I mean, it, it looked to me like uh, one of the dock guys stabbed you, uh, and then you you fucked him up, uh, and then we, we, we fucked up everybody else. Uh, and I would like to use Blood Curse of the Anxious <laughs> on Draken. Okay, what does that do? So as a bonus action, you magnify the adrenaline in the body of a creature within 30 feet of you, making them susceptible to forceful influence. Until the end of your next turn, all creatures have advantage on uh, intimidation checks directed at that creature. That's amazing. What is that? uh, Intimidate him. Yeah, what is that? Okay, so here's a question. In ter- just in terms of the the narrative of this, then is this kind of a Quinny has the idea that he wants to intimidate um, Draken, and then this blood curse just kind of like happens, or is it a conscious thing you you do, and then? Um, I know this is probably different for Reginald, but I'm curious. Yeah, I think it comes from the same place as his like infernal magic, like mm. especially mm-hmm. early on when Quinny would just kind of like lose his temper and kind of just kind of like right. just, yeah, kind, yeah, just yeah. kind of go to a place for a minute and then magic happened. I like that. Uh, I yep. think I think the same thing is happening here where he just kind of says, really? Because what I saw was Kira initiated all that carnage by punching uh, one of the, uh, the naval officers uh, completely unprovoked. And boy, it would be real, real bad for you if, uh, you know, our story wasn't consistent. Oh, Tyler, how, how how badly do you want this? Um, probably pretty badly right now. Okay, roll a d8. Oh, is that what it is? You have to take the. I'll uh, I'll see myself out. Ryan's got this. Yeah, just <laughs> just, just roll a d8. This is a good one. Okay, seven. Great. Uh, you take seven HP damage. Uh, okay. He will now have disadvantage on his uh, saving throw against this if you do your combined roll. Um. As you have amplified the curse, I will say your nose just starts randomly bleeding as you threaten him. Okay, that just makes it look worse. It just makes me look more kind of unhinged as I'm staring him through his eyes into his soul. Uh, And at that point, you realize if you are doing these kind of weird curses as you can feel the magic go through you, if you bleed, that will do a bunch of magic otherwise. So in desperate circumstances, you have to bleed to summon magic. All right. That sounds good. Wow. Um, yeah, do you want, are you looking for a roll now, Tom? Yes, please. Uh, okay. So you're trying to intimidate him. Um, I'm rolling against you, but I'm at disadvantage. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, and I have I have advantage, so I'm going to roll twice, I guess. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, we'll take the nat 20. <laughs> I'll, I'll settle for a nat 20. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're really slumming it. Oh, no, i got to stick with my nat 20. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, all right, he, um, uh, like, he, he goes pale and just kind of, <clears throat> like, leans away from you. Um, I, his I adrenaline. Grab, I grab, like, his hand and, like, like a, like a firm handshake just so, like, he can't lean away. Yeah, and, yeah, sure. Close. Um, and, uh, he's just, like, oh, um, yeah, look, I, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to make our stories not straight. I just, uh, you know, I just, just saying what I saw, um, but it, it, I, I must have missed seeing, you know, I must have had a dagger, I just, you know, I blinked a dagger into my, you know, my helmet was very spiky. Maybe I just saw that and I, I kind of thought I saw it. So no, 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 that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. So now that your, your helmet's off kind of revealing your soft head, 
Why don't you tell me again what you th what really happened there? Now that you've had a second to think about it. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, well, uh, okay. Clearly, um, uh, Kira uh, just just punched one of one, punched the heart out of someone. She hadn't done it in a while, so I think she just did it because she wanted to. Good, good. See, that makes sense because that's what I saw too. So that way, we can kind of confirm that we're we're both we both we can't both be wrong, right? Uh, that c correct. I hope. Good. So, so yeah. we're we're good. We're good. We're great. And I'll like give him a firm hand on the. Ah! Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, friendly pats on the back and handshakes. My favorite. That's great. Keep it sexy, and I'll like walk. Keep, walk keep on. it. Keep keep it sexy. <laughs> um. And he he blows on his delicate fingies that you crushed. Um, in his chainmail gauntlet hand. Yeah. Um, so, um, having, uh, kind of successfully, um, uh, got the story straight, you notice that Kira's kind of, um, eyeing you and, uh, says, uh, so, General, Captain General, what are, uh, what are we going to tell Declan? Well, we're going to tell him the truth. Uh, look, I don't know. If, if you know this, but uh, keeping secrets from Commander Declan uh, never works out too good for uh, for the people trying to hide things from him. I would agree. All right, good. So we agree that I'll give, deliver the report and, uh, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll tell be, him the truth. We'll tell him the truth. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of us will. Yes, all of us. Good. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of fun killing people again, huh? It's been a while. Well, I don't know about you, but I I haven't stopped since I got here. Yeah, you you must have killed what uh, five, six flesh golems all by yourself. Oh, you know it's it's hard to keep count when you're having fun. You know, especially when they're made out of different parts. It all turns into kind of a oh, was this guy already over here? Was that part of this guy? Kind of thing. Yeah, that's definitely a thing that happens. She kind of narrows her eyes, and um, <laughs> you continue on your way. I narrow my eyes. <laughs> she narrows her eyes more. Both of you walk into the um, light posts uh, and everyone else behind you is like, oh shit. And then they all just like find a light post to walk into so that they seem like they're they're part of the, the, the gang. Um, uh, it doesn't hurt anything but all of your collective pride. Uh, but such is the way of a bone crusher. Um, all right. So um, after, um, after your kind of travels... Uh, Oh, actually, no. Uh, I, sorry, for a second I was like, oh, yeah, because like Ryan already went to bed, so we got to stick with your story. He <laughs> didn't. He went to investigate uh, reunities. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what is your, Ryan, what, what's your approach to this place? Just going to like walk in the front door? What's uh, what's going on? Uh, he's going to try to think like Quinny would. He's going to climb up the side of the building and climb in the window to the room they were in, and then go that way to see if no one will yell his name. Because if go he comes down from inside, check, he might be cool. <laughs> I know you hate having to roll these as Quinny. It's a dirty 20. Ah, uh, only? Uh, yep. <laughs> so um, you uh, climb up the, the shingles <laughs> that uh, incidentally provide pretty good handholds. Uh, you have a hell of a time finding a window, but when you do, you, um, you slip through... Um, back into a room. It's clearly been uh, cleaned. There's like a, a like a bag of sheets and, and bedding on the ground. Um, they they haven't. Uh, they, whoever stayed here since you were here uh, clearly has come and gone. Um, but yes, no one yells your name. Nice. Then I'm gonna go. Well, first I'm gonna check the pillow to see if they replaced the chocolates because if they have, they did. I'm taking the chocolate and I Excellent. eat it. It's and so it, fucking good. It's weird, but things do taste better when they're stolen. Uh, and then that's uh, Quinny taste go, buds talking. <laughs> yeah, he, he's gonna put on uh, his invisibility ring, uh, and then he's gonna go downstairs to try to see if he can find the the woman he's looking for. Right. So um, you make your way downstairs, um, and you can see it's it's busy uh, again. Um, uh, you've uh, you come in just at the end of Wilford, and uh, he's like, "Ah, it's me." Um, and he goes uh, to his norm chair and and sits down. Um, you can um see the uh uh Janet uh who you you'd seen come in the other day um is kind of like 
still sitting at the bar um, ordering stew. Uh, a little less waterlogged this time, which is uh, uh, an improvement for really anyone. Um, uh, the uh, the band is not playing tonight. Um, instead, uh, there's just a, an old timey record machine with a big gramophone um, on it, uh, and uh, next to it there's a, a goblin with like a box of records, um, and he's got a pair of wooden headphones on, and he's just kind of like doing that DJ thing where he's just nodding for no reason. Um, the headphones aren't attached to anything; they're clearly fake, but he he thinks it makes him look cool. Um, but uh, yeah, there's just kind of a, a nice um, calm song playing. Uh, you know, it's the middle of the week. It's not as raucous as last time you were here. Um, and uh, yeah, you see uh, Delia, who is uh, is is uh, currently um, upselling the couple's meal to like a family. But she did the math, and there's six of them, so they could order three couple's meals. Um, and she could definitely hit her quota for the night. All righty. So uh, I'll let her do that. And then when she's walking back to the kitchen, I want to stealth up near her uh, and then have like a stealthy conversation to tell her to meet me somewhere. Um, okay, sure. I'll just let you do that. I don't think you need to roll. Great, great. I stealth up and I'm like, hey, it's uh, it's it's Regini. I need you to meet me in one of the rooms so we can talk about how to get past and uh, get things solved with uh, me and Quinginald. Oh. <laughs> So I see you two haven't sorted out your differences yet. I, we need to talk about how you define that being sorted. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, um, listen, uh, I'm very busy. I just sold a family three couples meals. Uh, and uh, that means I need to go tap a couple more barrels of champagne. Because uh, we're going to have to give a lot of samplers out tonight. But I think it's going to be pretty fun. Also, I have a table that I'm definitely trying a falling in love charm on. So we'll see. Um, but sure, I can meet you upstairs in a little bit. Okay, let's do that then. That'd be great. Okay, I'll see you up there in a little bit. Oh, I, I just up. love love. And then she goes into the kitchen. I gotta wait upstairs and I'm grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, like 20 minutes later, um, she uh, she comes in. Uh, and kind of looks around. She's like, um... Oh, I'll take the ring off. That's fine. Yeah. Ah, oh, oh, there you are again. <laughs> it's funny. You two are more similar than you'd think. You both love that invisibility ring. What a stupid DM to give that to a rogue type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was always surprised that the god of thieving would give it to this little boy. Oh, but uh, it's been pretty convenient for me over time. Yeah, that's that. That's fair. Okay, well, um, so how has it been going? Are you enjoying your Freaky Friday week? Well, we're sort of on a series of deadly missions where now we both have to do the thing the other guy's supposed to be good at. So, like, I'm learning lessons about his skills, but at the same time, I don't know how we're supposed to go back into our own body so our brains don't explode. Oh, that is, uh, right. That is, uh, that is a detail I should have given you, but, you know, it's just so busy that night. Oh. Honestly. Yeah, um, you can imagine, like, I'm trying to be real chipper about this with you, but I don't have the same level of patience for how busy the restaurant is that you do. Uh, no, I fully understand that. But also given that I'm the only one with your answers, um, maybe don't fuck with me. <laughs> Literally, I've had a really rough few days. Um, but that's that's a me thing, not a you thing. Look, um, the important thing is you said you're, you're learning about each other's skills, and that's great. Uh, the idea is just to gain some perspective on your partner. Get to know them a bit better. Get to understand what it's like uh, to live in their shoes. Um, that said, um, I should warn you, uh, you guys were my first Freaky Friday. Uh, and I've been reading the fine print on uh, some of the manuals the old wizard left when he built this place. Um, and uh, <laughs> you're going to laugh uh, when you hear this. Um, it would seem uh, that uh, at the end of this, you're going to have a little bit of a prisoner's dilemma. Um, basically... Um, each of you needs to very honestly explain why the other one deserves to live and why they're great. Uh, and if you lie, you lose. If either of you lie, I think you both lose. But if you can both tell the truth honestly and, and explain why the other person uh, is, deserves a, a chance to live, there's a, 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 a medium to large possibility you'll both survive and get to go back in your bodies. Otherwise, um, one of you might spontaneously combust, and the other one will be trapped uh, in the other body uh, as their their brain. Like maybe you do roads, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Okay, well that's specific and helpful. So, all right, we just gotta have ourselves a little chat about why we should stay alive. Right, but remember, 
If you do it before the last sunset, it won't work. It has to be very dramatic. Oh, okay. How many how many sunsets do we get? Is it seven? Oh, were you talking to my brother? Yeah, he was the only one who was around for that breakfast. Oh, I'm so sorry. I had to go see how the alchemist was doing with this love potion. Um, okay, look. Um, <clears throat> you only have a couple more. So you're really going to want to make the next couple days count. So you said you're on a bunch of deadly missions. Not my place to ask. Don't want to intrude. Definitely wouldn't want to overstep my boundaries uh, with the two of you. Um, <laughs> in any way. Um, but, uh, yeah, basically, um, I, I think... You know, you probably have about two nights left. So in two nights' time, Friday night, a freaky Friday night, uh, you will have to um, confess your your self love slash understanding of the other person, um, and uh, and hope that it all works out. So I really hope you are learning uh, about each other and, and getting to understand each other's perspectives. Because oh boy, I don't think skills are going to do it. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll capture the, the spirit of the moment as I need it. I'm actually more worried about him. He's not really a positive talker or a guy who tends to learn greatly about others. You got any tips on how to get him to empathize with me? Well, admittedly, I'm not very good at this relationship counseling piece. That's why I used an untested magic spell to try and do it for me. Um, but... I mean, what's what's the most interesting thing you've learned so far about being your partner? <laughs> My comedy brain just wanted to say, he's got a huge hog. <laughs> there you go. So that comes with its own challenges. I bet he has a hell of a time finding pants that fit well. And that's a real challenge. That amount of chafing could be problematic for anyone. So there you go. You've learned something already. So Maybe now you just got to hope that he's learning something like that about you. He's so grumpy. That could be why he's so grumpy. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep hoping. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Um. so there you go. Uh, fingies crossed. All right, I got to get back to work. Yeah, you have a nice night. Okay, bye. Um, and as she walks away, she's just like, <laughs> I think this is going great. And um, she uh, just like wanders back down and, and continues to serve food. Um, so, uh, Reginald, Ryan Reginald, you're left uh, in, in a room alone for a moment, um, her having left. Uh, what's running through your head? Oh, man, I'm probably gonna die. There's no way that he pulls this off. Uh, also, if we do get out of this, I, do we have to kill this woman? We might. I don't know. This is a scary amount of power. We probably need to at least steal her books. But hey, Quinny will be good at that if we need to do it. Okay, I've got to learn to empathize more with his point of view. Oh, no. I need to think like him and feel things. I probably need to start being meaner. Okay, we're going to figure this out. Uh, and then he just climbs back out the window and goes back to the sty. Uh, amazing. Um, all right. Uh, so, Tyler, uh, you arrive back at um, the Wizard's Tower um, with, uh, with your retinue. Um, and, uh, you're welcomed in, uh, this time you do actually meet, um, the two lords and the lady, and they are fucking furious. Um, not necessarily at you, but just in general. Um, so they are, um, Lord Eamon. Lord Van Ness. And Lady Kapoor. And their combined last name is uh actually you know what i don't think they go by a last name i think it's too confusing um i realized as i was writing this i'm like they should all have one unified last name and i was like this is just gonna lead to us being like wait which one though and we're already doing a body swap so they just go by the first names um the triumvirate eliminated their last names um yeah so lord eamon lord van ness and lady kapoor are in a tizzy um dealing with a lot of um uh sort of local people and um uh lady kapoor in particular is um just kind of like storming around um she's got a uh, a pencil um kind of clenched between her teeth uh looking at kind of a number of um like sort of um big uh unfolded pieces of parchment that have been put up and it looks to you almost like a crisis plan 
Um, and uh, the two lords are kind of losing their minds. And, and she's like, okay, okay, everybody just shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Okay. Um, so the Harpers are going to be mad. The Lord's Alliance is going to be mad. And um, I mean, our contract has been fulfilled with Falstaff. So I, I don't think he's going to be too mad about dead golems. But you don't want to owe that guy a favor. Uh, so send him something nice. Uh, she points to Eamon. She's like, how fast can you get a fruit basket to Neverwinter? And he's like, I don't know. I don't, I'm not made of fruit baskets. Um, she's like, okay, well, ah, I should have married someone made of fruit baskets. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, in terms of the Lord's Alliance um, and the Harpers, that's, and um, uh, Lord Van Ness is like, okay, I've, I've got some ideas. Uh, I think I can at least, uh, the Lord's Alliance won't want to move too openly um, right now. Harpers are a different issue, though. We should expect them tomorrow. Uh, I'll have my agents sweep the town. We'll round up anyone who uh, seems suspicious and, and jail them. Jail them. Jail, kill them. Jail them. And Lady Kapoor's like, maybe kill. And uh, Lord Eamon's like, no, no, jail. Jail. And they're like, okay, we'll we'll vote later. Uh, fuck. And then they see you come in. And she turns. And suddenly it's immediately Grace. And she's like, oh, our uh, esteemed guest. Uh, welcome. I understand you had a bit of a day. Oh, yes, yeah, you could definitely say that. Uh, certainly didn't go as planned down at the docks, but I'm happy to say that we managed to save basically all of the cargo at your port. You see, this one over here, and I gesture to uh, Kira and say, uh, wanted to uh, initiate an old bone crusher custom of burning everything to the ground. But I said, no, no, burning things down is for winners. And, you know, we, we came away from this one... Uh, with a loss, unfortunately. So your cargo is safe if you want to go send someone to collect it. Um, uh, immediately, like, Lord Eamon is, is leaving to go sort that out. And you just hear him say, like, they better have shipped us some fruit baskets. We didn't ask for them, but I desperately need them to send back. Um, so uh, Lady Kapoor kind of nods uh, and says, um, uh, well, I, I suppose that's fine. Will, will you still be able to uh, do your little ritual to bring the army? Install well, us as, as, as rulers, huh? That's what I'm going to endeavor to find out next. I'm going to go report to Commander Declan, and we'll have a better idea of our next moves when he issues orders. Uh, well, good, because uh, we definitely do not have uh, enough soldiers to uh, repel any amount of punitive action that must be coming our way, so uh, truly the sooner the better. Uh, certainly, but... Uh, uh... There's no need to fret, good lady Kapoor. Uh, after all, you've got the bone crushers here. We uh, we pretty well steamrolled the Grey Waters, the best mercenaries uh, in the land. Yeah, that that that's fine. Uh, I'm going to get back to figuring out what happens when an army shows up because uh, last I checked, there was like 15 of you. You'll, and then you'll she just be surprised. Cranks she the the, the fireplace. The fireplace turns. <laughs> I thought you put your hand. I was like, she does a mic drop and like walks away. <laughs> No, she needs that pencil for scheming. Yeah. Uh, great. If she's leaving, I'm I'm really eager to give this report to paint Kira in a negative light. Great. Um, so um, uh, the two of you um, rush the uh, the uh, fireplace. Uh, you arrive in the fireplace door at the same time. You are yet again in a two people squishing through a door scenario. Every Canadian's politest fear. Hmm. Um, what uh, what do you do, Quinny? Uh, I gotta get through first. I gotta be the one to to give the report. Uh, do you muscle through, or do you try and acrobatics through? Oh, muscle. I, I, uh, yeah. No, I, I know right. that this Go body is not uh, is not nimble. <laughs> uh, Eighteen for athletics. I'm assuming, or did you just want straight? Athletics strength. is great. Yeah, okay. uh, I rolled a six, so well, I rolled a two, but it was a six. Hmm. Um, so you like elbow past her, and for a monk, uh, that is that is an embarrassing thing to have happen. Uh, and she tries to like storm down the stairs, but you're just big enough to block them. Hmm. Um, and uh, so um, you stride uh, out into the room, um, and um, you uh, you enter just in time to see um, Declan holding his uh, staff like a rifle. Um, blow a servant's head off uh, against the wall um, and uh, just says, oh, I gotta tell you, that, that feels a lot fucking better. <laughs> Did you see him? His head exploded. <laughs> I am so incredibly fucking furious at you. Uh, yes, uh, Commander, uh, Commander Declan, I'm here to give my report of the situation at the dock. 
Oh, good. And he just yes. like sits down with the rifle across his, his lap. Well, we approached the gates when we heard word that the traitor Fluffy McStuffinkins had somehow perhaps survived or someone had adopted his alias and was apparently inside those docks before we got there to search for the cranial fulcrum. Uh, I leapt into action and, and got our people in there as quickly as possible, and we began searching through the crates when, quite unexpectedly, Kira Bloodfist punched one of the Navy officers in the chest and issued an, and started an all-out brawl. And amidst the chaos, that is where I believe the cranial fulcrum was stolen or lost or destroyed. Kira, you weren't able to find it after all, is that right? No, I wasn't. Um, and Declan says... Uh... So, Kira, is what he's saying true? And she says, uh, Sir, um, Captain Commander, um, we did indeed uh, find other people there. Uh, Fluffy McStuffikins was apparently on site, but none of us saw him. Um, but what I saw was uh, your golden boy here uh, uh, antagonizing one of the Navy officers. Navy officer tried to stab him, and when uh, Reginald here fought back very poorly, I may add, uh, he let out a scream that alerted everyone to the fact that we were there for nefarious purposes. Our catering guys, so carefully constructed over the, the last few days, uh, fell apart in a heartbeat. And so I did what my fists do best. I bloodied them. Um, and Declan nods, and... Um, looks to um, Junpai and uh, to Draken and says, uh, so, is what she's saying true? Um, you convinced both of them, uh, and you already rolled, so um, Draken is like, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I, uh, I definitely saw Kira punch first. That's my report. Keep it sexy. And he holds out one of his hands is still kind of like trembling and vaguely fucked up. Um, and Declan nods and looks to Junpai. And Junpai says, uh, To be honest, I couldn't see much of anything. Uh, but uh, I was close enough to see that uh, Reginald here did not throw a first punch at all. He seemed to be uh, quite reasonably conversing about catering duties with, uh, with the, the Naval Guard. Um, I honestly don't know what Kira's talking about. <clears throat> and she turns and just kind of uh, shoots daggers, and um, Declan just kind of shakes his head and says, um, Well, all right, I guess we'll uh, just pry it out of him the hard way. Uh, and then he just shrugs and um, waves to some people to start sharpening knives. Um, and uh, so no punitive action as of yet. Kira is furious. And is is like talking to some of some of the other bone crushers, um, but weirdly, uh, Tyler as Quinny as Reginald, it seems like you've survived just a fucking horrible night of of possibly getting murdered. Yeah. Uh, you've scored some points with the general, the captain general, <laughs> uh, it was the captain commander rather. That's and, me. I'm um, the captain general. <laughs> yeah. You, well, you scored points with you too. <laughs> Self important points. Um, but uh, yeah, you're pretty much done for the night. Um, the uh, the crystal has now become of vital importance uh, because without being able to magnify the size of the portal, keeping it stable throughout all this will become increasingly important because it's going to be a long time to hold a door open. Hmm. To hold a door, if you will. Um, so um, what uh, what is the, the final thing you do before turning in for the night tonight? Do you read the uh note? Oh, if I if I have privacy, uh, yeah. But I do also want to. Can I get close to this um, this sealed coffin like container that are? Uh, yeah, people are resting drinks on it at this point. It's uh, it's clearly hasn't like there's enough slits that people can like dump water in and like stuff bread through. But um, mm -hmm. otherwise, it looks like it's been locked for a bit. Uh, looking inside, can I see anything? Um. Yeah, there's uh, a um, uh, there's just, like a man inside. He's been blindfolded. Um, his hands are clearly manacled behind his back. His feet are manacled together. Uh, you don't recognize him. <clears throat> He's not anyone uh, you've seen. But uh, literally, just looks like a generic NPC from a video game. Just like uh, it, it, everyone hit like 
you know, slider to the left, slider to the right, this hair, uh, this height, go. Um, so just a regular looking guy in just a filthy shift. Um, they, they clearly didn't, didn't really bother to address him. Um, and, uh, yeah, he seems, uh, heavily sedated. Okay. There's, um, actually, let's say there's, um, uh, a, uh, a tube running out of the, uh, out of the box, um, to a, a nearby IV bag. Uh, of course, it's like a fancy IV bag. So like, yeah, it's made of, I don't know, a pig skin or something. <laughs> um, but, uh, they clearly got him on, um, some kind of drug drip, uh, to prevent him from plane shifting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, is this, uh, is this coffin crate box on wheels at all or is it basically has it been set here and, and it's not going anywhere it's just it's it's been set there it's also like very very heavy metal um you get the sense that it was probably meant to transport like a dangerous animal um yeah. so like heavy metal um uh kind of like an iron box and uh i'm starting to do like a kind of a casing of the uh of the box um because it basically seems to keep coming back to this guy right all this mm -hmm. other stuff was to make the process easier. But if we take this guy away from them, then they cannot open the portal to uh, the horde world. Mm -hmm. um, how many locks are on this this cage? Um, can you roll an investigation check, please? Investigation is a good one. That's a 14. Um, so this is some next level shit. Um, this box uh, isn't from your dimension. It's something they clearly brought through with them. And uh, it is the kind of lock that, um, for you as a thief, has always made you the most uncomfortable, which is a series of different styles of arcane uh, locks. So you can tell there's arcane binding as well as physical locks. And unfortunately, each of them is of a different style. So this is the kind of thing where if you wanted to pick this box... You'd kind of have to work your way through all of these, right. and um, the the odds aren't great. Okay. Okay, then yeah, I'm gonna try and uh, get some shut eye uh, and, and read this note that was was handed to me. I'm assuming cool. it's a note. I actually haven't like searched my. It it is. Uh, Ryan, what does the the note say? Oh, the note just says like, Quinny, you need to get distracted at the docks. If we throw a distraction your way, just take as long as you can. I'm stealing this. I'm Reginald. Uh, if anything goes wrong, blame it on Kira. You could say she was conspiring with uh, Kit and McSnugglefist. Uh, that's probably your easiest way out. If you just say it's her fault, they might not kill her. But if you say that it's a conspiracy between her and and uh, and Fluffy McSnugglekin, then you got her in the back. She'll be dead. Otherwise, she's going to be a real threat to you because a lot of people like her. So don't just make an enemy of her and leave her alive or you could have a problem. Uh, I like... <laughs> I like scramble off my pallet and like try and find Commander Declan being like, oh, Commander, I have so something just occurred to me. <laughs> um, he, uh, he, he's in the, the midst of, um, uh, I think um, he's got just roster sheets in front of him of every soldier under his command um, that he has written out. And he's currently doing a weird, like, word scramble of, like, okay, who comes through when? <laughs> so he's, like, underlining all of the deadliest murder psychopaths. And then, like, <laughs> ah, too soft. Only kills one person a day. No. Um, but, uh, yeah, so he's, he's distracted. He kind of uh, turns to you with, with a, a deal of annoyance. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Commander uh, Declan. Uh, I'm sure you've already considered this and taken whatever action you deem necessary, but it did just occur to me that the common thread throughout our misadventure thus far has been Kira. You see, Kira went off to find Fluffy when our wagon exploded. And when I came to find her, she, um, uh, Jinkai had been injured, but Kira was unscathed. I took it upon myself to dispatch Fluffy myself. And then he makes this appearance at the docks. Uh, perhaps, perhaps there's more between Fluffy and Kira than I initially thought. I was wondering if you thought the same thing. Well, that's an interesting theory. Um, 
Here's one for you, though. Uh, you're the one who killed Fluffy, right? Indeed. And now you're telling me that uh, maybe you didn't kill him so dead, after all. That doesn't oh, sound so much like a Kira thing. It sounds a little bit more like a you thing, doesn't it? I can assure you, uh, I, I can go out and get his skin bag. I, 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 I popped Can you? Good. Uh, yeah, you got like, you got like three hours? I'll be back in three hours. Be my guest. I'll be I'm here gonna, looking at my names. I'm going to go out and try and find his skin bag. Roll me an investigation check at disadvantage. Three. Uh, three plus eight. Um, Eleven. There we go. Wasn't going to matter. It wasn't there. No. Um, Ryan, I'm assuming as a paranoid man from a murder world... Uh, finding the skin of one of the scariest psychopath interns of your army, you probably took that skin with you after it hit you in the face. How did you dispose of it to make sure it wouldn't come back? Um, I, I think it's still in the bag of holding. He hasn't had time. Okay, that's totally fine. But you would have taken it with you, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't have left it because. Yeah. You're you're not the guy at the end of like a Mike Myers movie being like uh, like scary scary stabby Mike Myers not like ah, Mike Myers but just being like ah oh, it's fine we'll just leave him here I'm yeah. sure he's done it's pow 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 burn 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 cut cut yeah cut. yeah I mean Throw if he's had time he's definitely torched the body because he's got his rule you take the head off and you burn the all around you burn it all around so like yep. if he's had time it's out of the bag and torched otherwise it's still in you've the had bag. two nights worth of sleep i feel well, oh yeah night. i had one night that. between that and in here but yeah okay no i burned the fuck so out of that um uh tyler as quinny as reginald you spend um an annoying few hours in the woods uh doing that thing that i've done before and i've like misplaced my phone or my keys or something where you just like look around and be like okay well i remember okay we fought here there's the cart. No one's like the cart has been dragged to the side of the road, but it's yeah. just as heavy as like a big thing of concrete now. Um, so you spend some time in the woods. Uh, uh, you have uh, you have no luck, unfortunately. And I will say that uh, because of this, uh, you lose a bunch of potential sleep time. Um, yeah. So you'll only be able to recover half your health. Also, Declan is now suspicious. Oh, I'm not going back. <laughs> oh, you're not going back. I, I look. I hold that note, being like, if Kira lives, you're gonna die. <laughs> Oh, okay. I missed my shot, and Declan is suspicious of me, and I, like, the only way I could have, like, alleviated that uh, was by bringing back proof that I had killed him, uh, killed Fluffy, and I can't. So I'm just looking at this note being like, well, I'm going back to Hatfield, I guess. <laughs> All right. So, um, as, uh, <clears throat> as Ryan, as Reginald, as Quinny... Uh, you've returned from the inn. Uh, I assume you went back to Hatf uh, to the um, uh, the sty, or are you going to stay at uh, Reunities? No, he'd go back to the sty. He's got to watch over the thing they stole. <clears throat> so um, as, as you, uh, you you make your way back to the sty, and everyone everyone's getting kind of sleepy, but uh, your two ranked brown barrows are um, are kind of getting everything in order. Uh, but uh, you also find Mickey who is uh, in a, a state of agitation and excitement. And he's like, hey, hey, uh, so I hear things went pretty well. Yeah, we did it. We got what we needed because I'm Quinny Brown Barrow. <clears throat> so, uh, listen, um, you're doing a hell of a job. Uh, it's a, you're, you're exactly as good as the legends say. Um, I've got more information about us about this next gig, but uh, before I give you that, I, I, I kind of want to ask you something, if I can. You know, one rat to a halfling. I can't promise I'll answer. Quinny doesn't like direct questions, but I'll I'll, I'll answer if, if I feel like it. Look, uh, you know, this small town and these weird urchins have been fun, but uh, I kind of miss the thieving game, you know? And I feel like you and me, we make a pretty good team. What do you say to you and me uh, partnering up after this? Yes. Yes, that would be good. Yes. Yeah, Quinny right. loves partners, and he needs more allies. Which is why he would team up with the urchins. Quinny would love to team up with you. You're a very good scout. Great. Can I, I like live in your pocket or something? Yes, I commit to this. For as long as we two shall live. Okay, we gotta swear an oath. As long as I can trust you, though. You can't, 100%. Because if Look. you betray me or my friends, 
I'll kill you. Yeah, I understand, man. That that makes perfect sense to me. Look, who's gonna betray you? Mickey the rat? I ain't no rat. Ah, shit, I kinda am now, but not that kind of rat. Not the kind who gets, you know, stitches. You okay, know, if, if I were a snitch and such. And he'll just hold out a pocket. And he's uh, like, hop in. This is the best damn day of my life. Uh, and he hops into the pocket. He's like, okay, so here's the deal. Uh, since uh, clearly uh, things are going bad for uh, the old bad guys there up in uh, Wizard Mountain, um, they're starting to get a little bit wise. Uh, they're starting to get a little bit worried. And uh, it would seem that uh, the person bringing in the crystal has gone underground. Uh, they were supposed to make their presence known today, but uh, they never uh, they never gave the signal. So uh, what that means is this mind-focused crystal is kicking around here somewhere. We just got to find the person who's got it. Okay, how do we do that? Look, man, that's all I got. They didn't say anymore, but... Uh, um, Ryan, can you roll me an insight check, please? Hey. Good Where one. is it? 19. Very good. And just I assume you didn't 19. get much of a plus. Yeah, I was going to say, very <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, no, I got zero. Oh, that's just a proper fate roll. Good work, bud. Um, so... Um, you get to thinking about if this were you as a career coward, also thinking through the brain of a career thief, um, how you would go about this. And basically it would seem to make sense that either it would be someone who would be so familiar in either Hatsfield or in Welm, so familiar that no one would suspect them or someone new who's been here for a while. But, you also don't have much on on uh, Weln. You have a bit of information on Hatsfield, but Weln is, is kind of a big question mark. Can you repeat that for me one more time? I just want to make sure my brain locks it in for planning yep. purposes. Totally. So it would seem to you that if these evil assholes are trying to sneak something in and there's a mysterious courier, it's either someone who is so familiar here that they would go completely unnoticed or a relatively new arrival who has been here for a while. Okay. You wouldn't just want to show up in town because, again, basically this is like this is a single courier bringing an incredibly rare, incredibly dangerous, valuable item. So they're either going to try and obscure it by having it be a familiar face um, who no one would suspect or who would also be willing to deal with all these people or it's someone new, but they'd have to be familiar enough that isn't like, hello, fellow students, it's me, Steve Buscemi. I just arrived in town. I yeah, would like yeah, to talk to the like, lord and lady, please. Yeah, random guy who just arrived is like, hello, my job's to carry the mail. I'm <laughs> the one you've ever met before. The mail has never come, but it came today. Mm -hmm. I'm delivering flowers in this tiny diamond-shaped box. Um, so those are your options to ponder. Uh, as, uh, as you're thinking about it, though... Um, you know, your, your mind just keeps kind of um, wandering to um, Quinny, uh, who did kind of seem to, to stall a bit, um, but you got no no real proof of that. Um, you're a little bit worried also knowing what, what that, you know, this is your last free evening before uh, big, big, scary final uh, sundown tomorrow where you, you must break the curse. Um and it's like you can see him in the distance. Um, and then you realize uh, that you can. Um, and um, you you hear a, he snarf? And um, uh, Donkey Jr. comes like uh, trotting out and like looks to the horizon uh, as uh, Quinny in Reginald uh, comes stumbling out of the mists through the mud um, towards, uh, I assume you're going to the Hatsfield Inn, like you're going to Reunities? Yeah, yeah. Um, stumbling towards, uh, towards the inn. Um, and, uh, as, uh, he, he sort of stumbles through the door, uh, you just hear a, a chorus of voices yell, Quinny! Oh, balls. Uh, what the hell is he doing? Uh, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll run <laughs> in to drag him back outside. All right. Um, meanwhile, uh, Juniper, you have uh, a mystical teapot in front of you, um, with uh, with Mishra looking uh, uh, rather uh, rather excited, um, and uh, he says, um, "So, uh, as I said, uh, Juniper, I have no idea where the hell this goes, but I'm pretty excited to find out 
all I know is that it was it was valuable enough that uh, uh, I mean, er, er, other Urza called it a, a panic button. Uh, he said, if if I ever really needed help, I'd find find it in in here. So if you're uh, if you're really trying to stop all of this from from collapsing, um, this, this might be your best shot. But again, I, I think it's a one way ticket, so you might want to. I, I pull out my map. I'm like, is there anywhere else on the map that I'm supposed to go, or was this like? It was here. Yeah. This is the end of the road. It said seek out Urza at this location. I, I think this is where I've got to go. Um, okay, uh, you got anything you need to wrap up? Because again, once once you pull this pull this lever, I think you're kind of um, on the ride. Yeah, I just need to to, to let Clippity Cloppity know that I I, I I might not be back. Clippity Cloppity. My horse. Oh, that's adorable. It, and and Pidwick, I guess. Pidwick. Yeah, I, he's following me around. Wait, um, so you, you have a guy following you around named Pidwick, and you've tolerated him to this point? Well, yeah. I mean, fuck, you are a good person. All right, you go deal with that. Uh, I'll <laughs> I'll be here. Um, so Juniper, you um, you make your way back around uh, in front of the workshop um, where uh, Pidwick is um, uh, helping to rebraid a couple of the braids that fell out. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, rather handily. Um, and just like, uh, talking to Clippity Cloppity, uh, as you come out, you can hear that, um, they're actually having two completely separate conversations, but it's such pleasant small talk that weirdly their cadence seems to work enough (laughs) that the other one is like, yes, no, it is unfair, uh, that, um, uh, the stallion, uh, I was interested in, in just wanted to run and run and run. Uh, you know, they say wild horses can't drag you away, but they did. And it sucked. And, um... Uh, you see, like, uh, Pidwick just nodding and saying, like, and I just don't understand, you know? That's, it's, it's it's so rough. Why can't everyone just use one system to file books? It'd be so much easier. Um, and they're both just, like, having a, a, like, a genuinely nice, like, commiseration chat. Um, and uh, they see you, and the, uh, Pidwick says, oh, uh, are we ready to go? And Clippity Clobby says, oh, are we ready to go? Pidwick. Chosen one. Clippity cloppity. <laughs> You've both been great. Clippity cloppity for much longer. Um, uh, I've got to go and do some <laughs> some stopping things colliding, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to 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 come back. So I don't want to risk your lives um so so can, can you just take care of each other pl- please um clippity cloppity just kind of nods and says uh, well I'll, I'll miss you juniper but i, I always knew it would come to this so it's it's been a, a pleasure riding with you <laughs> that's a little <laughs> horse humor. understand and i like give her a, a big hug and and um it's it's so beautiful <laughs> yeah it's real nice uh, and uh, Pidwick says, um, "I'm uh, I'm 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 sorry, ma'am, but no, I need to come with you. I am your squire. It it is my job to carry heavy things for you, and 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 help you get ready for battle uh, when you're because car- you carry a lot of heavy things. You have a shield and a sword and a bunch of other stuff. So like I don't know if you had to carry water or something, I could carry. But no, I, it's my job to to help keep you safe. And Clippity Cloppity seems very capable and is not trying to stop the end of the world. So I think I need to come with you." Okay, here's the deal. You said okay, that's great. No, 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 no. No, 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 you're, here's the thing. You are not going to get anything you want on technicalities. <laughs> you got me? I didn't realize you looked at contract law. Shit, I underestimated you chosen one. Okay, no technicalities. Okay. Okay. Do you understand that this okay was not an okay? I, I, I'm aware okay. that the okay refers to not getting anything on technicalities and not an okay, I can come with you on a cool mission to save the world. All right. Now listen here. Our mission is to keep the tides of evil and darkness at bay no matter what. So if I tell you, Pidwick, stop talking, or Pidwick, Stay there. 
I'm doing it for your own good and the good of all worlds. Can you promise me that you will just listen to what I say and do what I say and, you know, I don't want to say not screw things up, but kind of not screw things up. You're so wonderful, but like, gosh darn, the stakes are too high. Wow, that's those are some heckin' harsh words. Uh, okay, I, I think I get it. Um, and then he, he walks forward and he reaches into the bag and uh, he pulls out his lantern. Um, and he's like, just, you, you need to promise me something too. What's that? Protect your light. And then he hands you the, the lantern. All right, let's talk about what light means. <laughs> okay, and he sits down and takes out a notebook. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, um, I, I... You thought this was going to cut away to another scene, but it's not no, going to. No, I, I, I'm just like, it's going to take a long time to talk about, and we kind of got to get going. Okay, well, in it's that case... It's inner light, it's a positivity, it's appreciation of beauty and nature on all good I, things. I, I, Juniper, those I know are, I, the... I, I was being metaphorical. Oh. You've taught me so much. Uh, I just want you to be safe. <sighs> okay. So, sh- sh- shall we? We're going? Oh, yeah, we're going this way. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. Wait, I'm coming too? I thought you told me to stay here. Well, you wanted to come so much. Ah! Oh, uh, so he, he just trots along behind you, um, and Clippy Cloppy's like, oh, <laughs> talk about a pack animal. All right, bye! And then Clippy Cloppy um, rears up uh, Nays uh, against the, the moon, uh, and then uh, rides off, um, and uh, you and, and Pidwick make your way uh, back around to Mishra after a series of awkward introductions where Pidwick um, refers to himself as the Squire of the Chosen One repeatedly, and Mishra shoots you a bunch of, like, gym takes of, like, oh no, this guy? Um, you uh, you sit down uh, with the, the mystical teapot, um, and uh, Mishra kind of looks up at you and says, so you're ready? Uh, I'm ready. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> Not in the slightest. And he okay, puts his hands on <laughs> either side, uh, and he just says, um, uh, Urza, I need your help. And all of the clasps around the top um, break. Uh, they just sort of um, shatter in a, a burst of sparks. And he pulls his hand back, uh, and the, the top um, just kind of creaks open. Um, and uh, inside, um, there is a... Um, a, just like a, a small um, glass stone um, with a note tied around it in immaculate script um, that just says, uh, and, and Mishra kind of reaches in and, and carefully takes it out, um, and uh, the note says, um, break this and think of who you want to find the most, and there shall you find help. Also, sorry I killed you in another dimension. You seem pretty great, and I hope your dimensions, Urza, appreciates you. XOXO, your brother from another dimension, Urza. And Mishra just kind of smiles and says, uh, honestly, the uh, the only person I'd like to see <laughs> that I can't see otherwise is um, he's uh, he's buried up on that hill there under that tree. So um, this is of no use to me anymore, but you're, you're searching for, for something or someone who can give you a proper answer, right? Yes. And uh, he just smiles and says, then I guess this is your teapot. And he hands you the stone. All right. Do we have to, like, all hold hands or something? I mean, maybe. Also, I don't really want to be stuck with this guy, so sure, do do that. Okay. And Pidwick, is, like, quickly uh, takes out a bottle of, uh, like, 70% alcohol and, like, dumps it on his hand and, like, scrubs it real fast. And he's like, sorry, um... Chosen one hands, you know, don't want to get them dirty. And he holds out his hand to you. Um, I, I take his hand. <laughs> um, all right, you uh, you look down at the stone uh, and you, you think about um, who you want to find the most. Juniper, who do you want to find the most? Is it Avalon Riker or is it Xanthus? You can pick one of the two. It's, it's Avalon Riker. That makes perfect without, sense. Just wanted to give you the option. Without a doubt. No, right. 
Yes. So having still never met the man, you you consider the name. Um, you raise the stone above your head. Um, you kind of lock eyes with Mishra, who just kind of smiles and nods. You can see Clippity Cloppity galloping away in the background. And uh, my DM question to you, both Laura and Juniper, is uh, are you ready to finally get some answers? The scroll is like going fucking bananas. <laughs> uh, Juniper is. Laura's a ball of anxiety, but let's go with it. Great. Uh, what do you say as you shatter the rock? Um. <laughs> oh, it's nothing ceremonious. It's just like, I can't get this wrong. And since I've never seen Avalon Riker, I have to imagine the, and picture his name with all my might. So it's just like, Avalon Riker, Avalon Riker, Avalon Riker. Oh God, I hope this works, Avalon Riker. <laughs> um, and with that, uh, you raise uh, the glass uh, pebble above your head, throw it down um, where it strikes the ground. And in a flash of light, you're gone. This episode of Dum Dums and Dragons features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Elizabeth at EL Hamstring on Twitter, and our fantastic DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode was edited by Ryan LaPlante, and all of Dum Dums and Dice's art is by Decapitated Markers or at Decapitated Marker on Twitter. That's M R K R. Our theme songs are, and now for that massive coronary, and skipping through the orchestra pit part one by Peter Gresser. And our ad music is No Control and Chiefs by Jazzar. J A H. ZZAR, all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice, or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B, D-U-M-B, D-I-C-E. And tune in next week for more Dum Dums and Dragons. Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christian Manicola, Long Long, The Half-Blind Prophet, James Quayar, Charles Grams, Christopher Little, Olin Anderson, Sue One, George Dolby, One True Artistry, Orion Birchfield, Lord Abradovic, Noel Lewis, Scott Garland, Anthony Griffin, Zekin X, Jordan Neesmith, Benjamin V, Gavin and Abby McDonald, and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you. <laughs>